thank you so much for coming today. Um, I'm going to be giving you some college tips on US colleges. Uh, just before we start, I'm going to introduce Nick Paddock. He is a representative from the University of Cincinnati. Uh, he's going to chime in if you guys have any questions, and he's also going to give a short presentation at the end on UC and everything that we have to offer. So let's get started. So I'll just introduce myself quickly. My name is Jess Silstra. Um, I'm originally from Sydney, Australia, and I'm currently there right now. I am a rising junior, so I'm going into my third year at the University of Cincinnati. I'm majoring in musical theatre with a minor in business administration. So I'm in their College Conservatory of Music and also I'm minoring in the Libna College of Business. So I love UC. Um, I can only speak highly of the American college experience. So I'm excited to tell you all about it today. So we have four topics we're gonna to talk about. Uh, we're gonna start with housing and then we're gonna talk about on-campus jobs, uh, some scholarships, and then we're gonna talk about experience-based learning. And I'll open it up to some questions. Uh, if anything comes up at the end, you can we can chat about it. So let's go with housing. So all, oh, sorry, all universities in the US um, will offer on-campus housing. So you can either have on-campus or off-campus. Uh, typically, most universities require you to live on campus for your first year. Uh, it's a great way to meet people and just immerse yourself in that college when you first get there. You're literally living on campus. Uh, so that's great. And then you can move off campus in your second year and for the rest of your time there. So I lived on campus my freshman year and then I moved off campus for my sophomore year and I'm going to live off campus for the last two years. So in terms of on-campus on housing options, there are three types of rooms you'll see I have listed there. You'll start with a traditional style. So your traditional style will typically be um, one room and you'll generally share with a roommate and it'll be two single beds, a wardrobe, a desk. It varies depending on your college and what they offer. I kind of think of it as that traditional, you know, American movies that what you see in college dorms, that's what a traditional style is. And then a suite style, you'll, oh, also in traditional, you'll generally share communal bathrooms. In a suite style, you'll probably, um, you might have roommates, but you'll have less people to share bathrooms with. And you'll probably have some more amenities, more space. And then in an apartment style, you'll have your own kitchen and all the things that come along with an apartment. So there are lots of different options and it kind of just depends what you, what you want, how you want to live and what your university offers. Um, so that's on campus. And then in terms of off campus living, um, most colleges have like university communities off campus. So you'll generally be in an apartment building with other university students and Honestly, generally, it's pretty much a walk across the road or a couple of blocks, which is nice. So you're in that whole campus community, even if you're living on campus or off campus. So what to bring? It also just depends on what your living situation is going to be. I think that obviously your clothes is the most important thing to bring from home and any other important and valuable things. But most other important things for living like sheets and all that kind of stuff you'll be able to buy in the US uh, there's so many shops you can buy from anywhere you can buy online so there's lots and lots of options that's what I would suggest doing now in terms of roommates your roommates you can pick a roommate or you can be surprised I think that both these options have their pros and cons and it really just depends what you want to do. Um, I've heard great stories of people picking their roommates and also being surprised. Uh, so that really is just up to you. Uh, if you want to pick a roommate, there's great like online Facebook groups and places to meet people. So definitely lots of options there. I've loved living with roommates and I'll speak about that a little bit later. 
I think that that there are a lot of benefits of living on campus, especially in your first year. As I said, you immerse yourself in everything and you're also just so close to all of your classes and your lectures. So if you like to sleep late, you can just roll out of bed and go. And also you're constantly surrounded by people and hanging out with new friends. And another pro to this is that a lot of the dining halls are really close to all of the dormitories. So you can generally walk downstairs or not far and you'll be at all of the dining halls. In terms of dining options, most housing and dining are lumped together in your university costs of living and things. So you'll have here at UC, we have three main dining halls. Uh, all of them are pretty much the same. They offer a wide variety of foods for all different um, dietary needs. And it uh, just depends what you like to eat and you'll have everything that you need. And what I love about uh, UC too, is we do uh, like fun, fun days. So there'll be different themed um, meals and things. So it always, it always makes for an exciting day when there's themed meals. So yeah, housing is um, fairly easy and there's lots of options depending on how you wanna live your life in the US. Uh, I just quickly, I lived in the traditional style dorms in my freshman year. And then, as I said, I moved off campus to an apartment style, literally across the road. And I've loved both of those living situations. Uh, so I'm going to move on now to on-campus jobs. So on-campus jobs, there are a number of different types of jobs. You can work in administrative jobs. You can work in restaurant and dining centers. Uh, you can work in recreation centers. So that may include uh, like fitness clubs and things. And you can work in customer service. So there's a couple of rules that you need to watch out for when you're working in on-campus jobs. Um, so you can work up to 20 hours per week while your classes are in session but you can work up to 40 uh, hours while classes aren't in session. So that may be during your long summer break or during a spring break or something. So that definitely gives you the opportunity to work quite a lot. Uh, I work uh, at UC in their international office and I've really, really enjoyed it. I think it's been a great way to get involved in other parts of campus that may be a separate from my degree and other things like that. So I, and I also like working with university students and learning about the university as a whole. Your pay is typically state minimum wage. So for example, in Ohio, the minimum wage is $7.25 an hour. So I'm gonna move on now to scholarships. So just before I start this section, I want to mention that each university in the US is a little different in what they offer for scholarships. So I would suggest the first thing you do for this is to go to the university website and really find out what they offer. Uh, but just some general topics I have listed here. You can have either merit-based scholarships or you can have need-based scholarships. So uh, merit-based aid offers financial support based on a student's academic achievements. So this would be your high school transcript or other extracurricular achievements you may have had. Um, and then need-based aid provides funds for students based on their level of financial need. Now this depends on whether you're a state-based school or a private college. So as I said, it's best to go to your um, to directly to the college website when you're applying uh, to look at what scholarships are offered at that particular university. Um, but there's also scholarships outside of universities. So I've put a link here to uh, internationalscholarships.com and I would suggest having a look to see what you're eligible for. There are great opportunities for um, students in the US to get financial aid outside of the university. And just one more thing to think about, when you're applying for the university, your scholarship application will be separate from your general admission. So your academic and extracurricular, all those things will be separate from your scholarship application. So it's best to 
keep an eye out for both of those and what deadlines you'll need for both of these um, uh, scholarships. Uh, just here on the left, there's a breakdown of what your university costs will look like. So you'll see your tuition and fees is going to be the most expensive thing. And then your housing and dining, your health insurance, and then your books and other supplies. So that's a good breakdown of where your funds will go at a typical US college. Um, so lastly, we're going to talk about experiential learning. So experiential learning to me is one of the best parts about going to college in the US. I think that for me, anytime I've been in an environment where I'm working on my field of study I, is when I grow and learn the most. It's, it's the time when I'm actually immersing myself and I'm taking the skills that I'm learning in the classroom and applying them practically in a, in a work setting. So there's two types I want to talk about today. You've got an internship and a co-op. So your internship uh, can be full-time or part-time. Part-time work uh, you can do while taking classes. It's generally 20 hours per week. Um, or you can do a full-time internship and that's when you're not taking classes and that'll be about 40 hours per week. Now, internships can be paid or unpaid depending on the employer and the career field. So, and job location can be near the university or it can be online. So that's internships and then cooperative experiential learning experiences or co-ops as we call them. Uh, they're full-time. So you'll do full-time work and you won't be taking classes. Uh, they'll be 40 hours per week and they'll be the duration of a semester. So typically about 15 weeks. And they're generally given to you and you find connections to these through your university. So your university generally has some pretty established agreements with companies and they help you to interview and then get your co-op. Uh, co-ops are paid only and the job locations can really vary worldwide um, or they can be in the US. Uh, we've got a student who works in the uh, international office who is working out in California. So there, there's really some awesome opportunities for both co-ops and internships as experiential learning um, activities. But I also wanted to talk about uh, as a musical theatre student, obviously we do our main experiential learning would be through performing. So in CCM, which is our music school, we do a number of performances throughout the year and we get incredible experience. And I think for me, this is when I found uh, I've had the most fun and I've also learned the most uh, in my college journey. Uh, and I've also worked in some other um, internship companies uh, in my business study. So that's been great as well. So definitely experiential learning is a huge plus when you're coming over to the US. So I would also look into that when you're applying to different universities and see what they offer and see what companies they have connections with, because that'll give you a good understanding of what opportunities and connections you can make while you're still in school. So that's pretty much all I had prepared today, those topics. I thought that they were really interesting and important to talk about. Um, I'm gonna open it up if anyone has any questions 